Today's lesson is going to be one of the most important lessons you learn in this statistics course. We're going to be learning the essential vocabulary for statistical studies. Whether it's an advanced statistical study or an introductory statistical study, it's all very important vocabulary you have to know to be able to navigate your way through this course. We'll begin with a population versus a sample. Now, a population is all the individuals in a group that you are interested in. Examples could include all the students in the school, all the people in your town, or every single iPhone. Now, a sample is a small subset of your population. It should be an accurate snapshot of your population. It should always be random. We want things to be random in statistics. Examples of samples would be a group of randomly selected students at your school, a group of randomly selected people in your town, a group of randomly selected iPhones. Notice that I'm not representing every single member or item within each population. That's what a sample is, a small group within each population we're interested in. When do we want a sample? When we can't perform a census. A census is when you can collect data from every member of your population. A sample is when you collect data from a small subset of your population, and it should resemble your population and always be random. You'll notice in the illustration down below, we have a lot of dots to represent a population. Our sample are randomly selected dots from that population. You notice it is significantly smaller than our population. You will learn just how large or small your samples have to be throughout this course. But for right now, it's just important to note that you're looking at a much smaller group from within a population to represent your sample. And there's a randomly selected group. Now, why do we sample when we can do a census? If you have a small population, you should always perform a census. An example of this would be, what's your class's favorite pizza topic? If you have a relatively small class, you can easily ask every individual and you can come up with a summary, summarize what is the favorite pizza topping for the entire class. Now, if you have a large population, that's when you would perform a sample because you can't perform a census for whatever reason, maybe it has to do with time, maybe it has to do with monetary reasons, maybe it has to do with circumstances. An example would be the favorite pizza topping of everyone in your school. Maybe it's very difficult to get everyone in your school in the building for one particular day when you're doing your survey. Maybe you're physically unable to ask every single individual, whether it has to do with time, money, or just physical constraints. If you can't ask every member of your population or gather every item from your population, that's when you would do a sample. Now for parameter versus a statistic, parameters summarize a population. They can be means, medians, modes, ranges, etc. An example of this would be the average wait time at a Dunkin' Donuts drive through for all customers. A statistic summarizes a sample. Again, it can be a mean, median, mode, range, etc. An example of this would be the average wait time at a drive through for Dunkin' Donuts customers within your sample. Notice that parameter and population both begin with a P. It's easy to remember that they go together. Same thing with statistics and samples. They both begin with an S. That's an easy way to remember that they go together. So remember, parameters summarize populations. Statistics summarize samples. An inference is a conclusion that we make about our population based on the results of our sample. You'll notice in the illustration below, we have a large population. We randomly select individuals from that population for our sample. We conclude something about that sample come up with some sort of summary, and we apply that summary for our entire population. We use statistics from our samples to make inferences about our population. An example of this would be, how long does the average resident of your town spend driving to work? If you're looking at a large population, it's too large for a census, we sample. So if you can't ask every resident in town, which is very likely, that's when you would sample. You would randomly select N residents. Notice I'm using lowercase n here instead of establishing a specific number. That's because when we don't know a sample size, we always go with a lowercase n in this course. It doesn't matter how big the sample is for right now. We just want to establish that it is going to be smaller than our population. So what we would do is we would collect data from every single individual within our sample not in our population. We can't ask everyone in our population. So we randomly select people. 
And then within our sample, within those people who are randomly selected, we collect individual pieces of data for our sample. We then summarize that data. In this case, we're gonna calculate the mean of our sample. All the data within our sample, we calculate a mean, that becomes our statistic. In this case, that's 24.5 minutes. We can take that statistic, that summary of our sample, and make an inference about our whole population now. So my inference would be based on my sample, the average amount of time a resident in town spends driving to work is 24.5 minutes. I've made an inference about my population by performing a sample. Second example is maybe I wanna find out what is the average amount of time per day that my family spends on their phones in July. Do I have a large population? No, I don't. My family is relatively small. Is it too large for a census? Absolutely not. I don't have to perform a sample now because I have a small population. I can perform a census. So I can ask each family member to share their average screen time from their phones. Each average screen time that I receive from those family members becomes my data. You'll notice I have each person's average for July. For the examples, I use four hours and 17 minutes, eight hours and five minutes, and two hours and 38 minutes. I then calculate the average of my data. That becomes my parameter because it's summarizing my whole population. I didn't perform a sample, I performed a census. I asked every member of my population of interest, gathered data, summarized it, that became my parameter. Do I make an inference? I don't have to, no, because I didn't perform a sample. I don't have to jump to a conclusion here. I can take my summary and apply that to my whole population. I don't have to make a leap or I don't have to jump to a conclusion. In this case, my conclusion is that each member of my family spent an average of five hours on their phones each day in July. In conclusion, to summarize, I want to learn something about my population of interest, but was too large to perform a census and calculate a parameter. Instead, I gathered data by performing a random sample of my population and calculated a statistic. I used my statistic to make an inference about my population. If I had a smaller population of interest, I could perform a census, calculate a parameter, and that would conclude my population. I could come up with a nice summary and conclusion for my entire population based on my census. This is all very important vocabulary you're going to be using throughout the year. So feel free to revisit this video for different examples, as well as to review the vocabulary.